Hey everyone, this is Metagross Freak covering the fourth Toa in the 2015 uh, Bionicle reboot line, Tahu Master of Fire. Um, at time of release, he is $20, and based on what I've seen with Kopaka, he, they seem to be worth it. Um, the $20 ones, based on their appearances and the extra parts, have uh, additional armor and uh, variants of weapons, and their alt modes are a little bit cooler. Um, I still think it'd be better if they were all just a flat 17, but without further ado, let's build a skeleton. It's worth noting that Tahu has not two, but four anti-friction joints. They really want to make sure this guy doesn't fall over. But then again, with giant swords, eh, you kind of need better friction. And we're back with the Tahu Master of Fire Skeleton. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to put this all together. I have all the armor set aside. And he has a very impressive frame. Um, <laughs> to carry the extra weight of all the extra armor he has, he not only has the friction joint on the hips, but he also has it here on the ankles. Um, this also gives him ridiculously large ankles, though when you see his leg armor, you'll be glad he has it. Um, he also has two ball joints on the arm, one for the uh, the pauldron, or shoulder armor piece, and one for the actual arm itself. The arms are about average length, but what's really cool is he has a... Uh, he has, well, a little assemblage on the back of his shoulders, making a backpack. And, of course, he is uh, he is both handed. He has uh, two-handedness for his action ability. Without further ado... Oh, uh, for extra pieces, I had a, uh, a plug. Can't have too many of those. A, uh, a mini plug. I like those. And a stopper. Those are pretty useful if I did more technic, but uh, yeah, so uh, I'm actually happy that there wasn't a lot of extra pieces. Sometimes you get an obscene amount, like in uh, Tahu, I had, not Tahu, uh, Pohatu, I had like six extra pieces. It was kind of funny. So to build Tahu, he has a normal chest plate, but not just one, and not just two. He has three chest plates, and trust me, he needs all three. Tahu is, you know, if, if uh, Kopaka had the biggest shoulders in the uh, on the island, Tahu has the biggest legs. Uh, to compensate, I guess, for Ta for uh, Kopaka's massive calf armor, Tahu has literal chest plates on his legs. Yes, that's right. Literal chest plates on his legs. It's funny. Um, and unlike Kopaka and Pohatu, who have the, uh, I, I'm calling it Iron Man washboard, he, like Liwa, has the, uh, the flat, the flat torso, which goes on just as a normal Hero Factory torso would. He also has a printed chest piece, like all the other Toa, that has a uh, very nice, kind of a fiery, volcanic, also kind of dragon-like eruption. I don't really know how to describe it, but it reminds me of, like, it, remi it reminds me of a volcano erupting. And that goes simply right on top of the chest plate. If I can get it on, hold on. Um, it is worth noting, though, that he doesn't use the uh, Hero Factory torso balls. Instead, they, I guess, decided to give him the extra ball, extra pair of uh, spheres on his arms so that his pauldrons would move with him. And I guess that's mostly because he's more active, unlike Kopaka, who simply like chucks a spear, Tahu's swinging swords around. So I guess they decided that his, uh, his pauldrons need to move with his arms, as you can see, they do. Which is kind of, it's kind of cool though. Though it does limit the mobility, he can't really have his arms going straight up in the air because these pauldron balls crash into the hero factory balls. So if you want his shoulders to uh, to bend, you'll have to uh, navigate them so they're both angled backwards. 
but for the time being this is fine um he actually has a ton of armor he has the uh <laughs> ironically he does not have knee armor instead he has hip armor meaning tahu in addition to having crazy leg armor also has currently the biggest hips I'm actually curious to see, I haven't actually, I don't own Gali or Anua yet, but I'm curious to see if Gali can top him on that. And that's partially as a joke. Uh, Tahu also has more of these, uh, these gold plates on his arms. And no pun intended, he has a lot of armor. Just, he has like Kopaka level armor, though it's not all focused around like the, the leg air. It's not all focused around his shins. <laughs> this is kind of cool, though. He, but he's got, like, these big, chunky, meaty wrists, and it's kind of neat. Um, I'll put the pauldrons and the mask on last. Time for the backpack. He's got a little bit of back armor, and, like, Kopaka, it's just a simple red plate. It pops, boonk, right there. However, he does have these cool little slots uh, placed here and here for the uh, first set of weapons. If you saw the Liwa video, you recognize these as being the gold katanas, a gold coloration of the katanas that Liwa has, except uh, Tahu's automatically gets stored on the back. Let me uh, try to angle this in right. It can be difficult when they're in their storage mode. So when stored away, they kind of hang loosely at the uh, on his back, kind of like a miniature cape. You can't really see it that well from the you can't really see it that well from the front. It just looks like he has these blades, but they are on a double swivel, so they can come up, possibly indicating some kind of wings. That'd be kind of cool if he had fire wings, but uh, most of the art shows them like that shows them as being kind of a uh, up and out mode. Um, I'm not a big fan of this. I think it looks too, I think it looks too wingy because um, Tahu, in my opinion, shouldn't fly. But I think it does look good hanging down or possibly um, if, if either hanging down straight or hanging down to the sides. Um, cause that way you can angle it up if you wanted to do like a Buzz Lightyear jetpack kind of thing. It's your decision though. You can angle your Tahu swords however you want. I'm choosing to leave them down. Uh, the last bits of armor on Tahu before I put on the mask, let me angle this up more, are these two large pauldrons. Again, we have, uh, the transparent orange, except now the gold pieces are, uh, facing outward. So he has very large shoulder armor, though not nearly as bulky as Kopaka's, which literally just cover his shoulders. Though I'll be honest, I do like the uh, Kopaka pauldrons a little bit better. Uh, you can angle these however you want. Um, you can angle them down like that to make his shoulders look uh, bulkier, or you can angle them like that to give that more shouldery flare feel. Um, I think if you're gonna do the wing mode, that's a good angle for it. You know, Kopaka is, uh, not Kopaka Tahu in a wing mode, because it looks kind of like the Jets. Um, again, that's really your preference. I'm, I'm gonna leave them uh, fairly flat. Well, I see the uh, the work here. The um, The, Official artwork does have them more like that, so he just has really bulky arms, so you can make of that as you wish. And last but not least, the Mask of Fire. So Tahu's mask is very reminiscent of the original uh, 2001 Kanoe Howe. I like it a lot, it's definitely a good update. I forgot to mention that uh, the weapon Tahu has is the uh, the lava board. If you recognize it, if you recognize the pieces from the Kopaka video, it's basically uh, silver versions of Kopaka's weapons. Instead of having the blue and white, uh, I'm going to call it ice lightning. He has uh, fire, fiery lightning, 
and uh, rather than being connected inverted with one down and one going up, they're both going the same way with the uh, the teeth connected with the teeth connected, and two pegs on uh, on one side, so Tahu can surf, and they they literally have it in the instruction guide as having his um of having his right side foot be connected. So let me pop those in. And there you go. Tahu is standing on his board. This is very top heavy though. So you're gonna wanna angle it. You're gonna wanna have like him leaning in like that. And that's him on the board. Um, so let me get to a higher camera angle so you can see what it looks like. Cause right now he looks kinda it's kind of stout, but trust me, he'll look a lot taller when you see it at a higher camera angle. At a proper camera angle, Tahu looks ridiculously tall. I think he's just about as tall as Kopaka, if not maybe a little bit taller because of the uh, the longer the longer calves plus the uh, the double uh, leg extensions. Um, however, he does have his shoulders lower, which I guess kind of makes up the fact that he has massive shoulder armor. In fact, I'm even considering swapping around these uh, translucent orange pieces to make the shoulders look more solid. Because uh, in a uh, in a non-standard position, they look kind of well open. In non-powered up mode, Tahu is supposed to hold these two golden swords as his uh, main source of battle uh, battle uh, fighting potential. Sorry, I flubbed up that sentence. Um, also no, worth noting is Tahu has blue eyes. I think that's really interesting. That's not relevant to this figure, but these swords actually go on his back when he's in his powered up mode. Though for some reason the instructions never actually show him holding the gold swords. In fact, all of the instructions, I'm looking through the booklet right now, when you build him, before you put on the mask, it shows him with the gold swords on his back. And then it shows going from the uh, the normal mode to the gold mask mode, you taking off his board and turning it into the twin lava swords. It isn't until you realize that, oh yeah, wait a second, if he has the board, he has no weapon, that you realize you need to take off the sword. Or, you know, you could just look at the cover. So I think it's kind of weird that they don't actually explicitly say that the... Uh, the golden swords are weapons. They just kind of imply it and hope you figure it out. Because if you just if you don't have the uh, if you don't have the cover, just going off the instructions, they seem fairly decorative. It's kind of interesting. So there we go. Tahu is standing pretty tall. Um, look at that. Look how tall he is. He's tall enough that you know I don't even need to angle the camera for you to see him. But, for him to go into his gold mask mode, you simply need to remove the gold swords, put them on his back, as I will now do. You can angle them however you like, I like to angle them down. Interesting part though is, you separate the lava, you have to take off the black connector first separate the swords, they have these teeth, and the one that has pegs goes in the left hand with the pegs facing in towards Tahu, and the one without pegs has the connector go on the back of the sword for some reason and connect in Tahu's left hand, which I'm unable to do apparently. There we go. Then you just swap out the masks. And there you go. Tahu is able to take on the legions of the Skull Spiders in order to save uh, the island of Okoto. And there he is. And powered up Tahu is quite an impressive sight. These, these uh, lava swords are massive and definitely an amazing nod to Tahu Nuva. Um, while the mask is fairly, fairly you know, based on the original Tahu, you can definitely see that Tahu Nuva had more influence in this design. I'm really happy with his, how this came out. Plus, if you do the uh, wing mode, like I suggest, 
tilting the uh, armor out. He looks like he's practically flying by as he swipes you all with his lava blade. So it's almost like he's just this giant draconic knight. Uh, Tahu Nuva is definitely cool. Sorry, new Tahu, not Tahu Nuva, I'm sorry. Is definitely really cool and worth the 20 bucks. Um, Kopaka, I wasn't so sure on because Kopaka with his spear and shield I felt was a little lackluster, but I'm definitely feeling it with Tahu. Tahu isn't even my favorite Toa. Um, I was a bigger fan of Kopaka and um, Pohatu from the original series, so as a character I wasn't looking forward to Tahu, but I definitely think that Tahu's got the flair and the pizzazz, and it's really cool. Um, also, I think I may have forgotten to mention it with the uh, Kopaka video, so uh, here you go. Very light green. I'm gonna call this. Uh, I'm gonna call this mint green. Uh, skull spider. It's kind of hard to tell. I know there's a glow, but basically it's a very light, almost mint-like green um, skull spider. So hopefully in the next day or two I'll be able to get Golly and Anua and finish up the series. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Until next time, I'm Metagross Freak, and have a good night.